Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to talk about a little infrastructure program I've got going. Well, a big infrastructure program I've got going. But first I need to reintroduce the Monument Rocket. And you may not have seen the video on the Monument Rocket or videos on the Monument Rocket before. The Monument Rocket is a rocket specifically designed to launch a Saturn V into low Earth orbit, a fully fueled Saturn V into low Earth orbit. Uh, the rocket is actually uh, this stage and below. The rest is the payload up here. In this case, it's configured for a very hefty Mercury mission uh, with crew and all. Uh, so that is, that always takes a lot of Delta V, let's face it. But the configuration of the Monument rocket is at the bottom here, we have an aerospike uh, with a total of 36 M1 engines. These are hydrogen oxygen engines. They're basically the hydrogen oxygen version of the F1 engines on the bottom of the Saturn V, but we have 36 of them. And then there's also actually five bonus ones that aren't part of the spiky. Ah, gosh, sorry about the flashiness. Um, they're in the center because I need five more here. So there's a door there. Um, let's see, uh, th this all closes up, whoops, I don't think I, oh, there we go, uh, for re-entry so that we could in principle recover this, but that would not be true for the monument rocket. That's only true if we're using an aerospike SSTO, which we are not in this case. So yeah, that shielding actually has nothing to do with anything. Uh, sorry, but the, the, the little door opens up here to reveal those five engines, so I like that. Anyway, on the boosters are four RD-270s each. RD-270s were going to be used for an alternative to the N1, N1 rocket, uh, the UR-700, but that did not come to pass. But UDMH and NTO, uh, they are Soviet engines, and they are basically the UDMH and NTO versions of the F1 engine, except they're stage combustion, so they're more efficient. And so we have pairs of boosters, each with four of those. So a tremendous amount of thrust to get this off the ground. The second stage has 13 M1 engines. So it's Hydrolox all the way in the core. And you can see the pad mass is 51, 000, well, 52,000 tons. Uh, so naturally, it would not make a whole lot of sense to ignite this here. Uh, it would leave a very big crater. Well, even before it left a really big crater, the acoustics would be horrible and probably wreck the rocket and it'd all be bad, really. Now, those of you who are connoisseurs of horrible ideas will know about Sea Dragon. And Sea Dragon, they submerge it and launch it from the water. I, that wouldn't be workable for this system because of the... Uh, refinement of the engines, let's say. Sea Dragon had uh, the world's crappiest engine. Uh, so crappy that uh, nothing, the ocean water couldn't touch it, basically. It was so, so horrible that S SRBs would be more efficient than it. Uh, but anyway, we've got very high efficiency engines, but they're also very delicate, so we can't submerge this in water. However, we would like to not launch this on land, and I think you can see where I'm going with this. So I have developed an alternative. Okay, and here we are, over the water. I mean, it's not very far out of the water, but this is just a start, and... You can see the setup here. We've actually, I, I, whoop, whoop, whoop. it's actually a little bit hard to see it like this with the rocket in place, but there's actually a cradle in here that the air spike is meant to fit into. It even has a gap, a hole for the five engines that are in the center of the air spike. So, and then there's struts very carefully placed. Uh, uh, oh, maybe we can see uh, uh, here. Uh, so there's little struts there if the rocket is oriented just right, uh, the the thrust will go alongside the spikes instead of at them. But it's supposed to sit right in the cradle here. And then the towers here will have clamps. But I can't tell you how difficult this is to get right. 
this rocket has exploded on here 20, 30 times. <laughs> so uh, you have to place it perfectly because there are colliders around. Also, there has to be an invisible collider just above the surface. You see where the launch clamps are touching here? You see they're, uh, they're sort of sitting on something there. There's an invisible collider there. So the thrusts of the engines aren't actually going to hit the surface of the water. And the reason for that is because if there isn't that collider there, the whole thing just blows up. <laughs> when you uh, try and launch something over water, uh, if it collides with the water, it all blows up. So it, it might be possible without the launch clamps for the rocket to just happen to sit on the collider here just perfectly, but it, it's very difficult to get it to do that. There's also a collider on this outer toroidal, toroidal ring, if you will, um, which is supposed to be all heat shielded, by the way. And we have the, it's, it's not really a crawler way. I don't know what to make of it, to be honest. I don't know why it has gaps either. Because in Blender, it's all seamless. And in fact, I don't know why this bit has a different texture than this bit, because it's actually a repeating thing. So there are a lot of peculiarities to how it's turned out here. But it's a start. It's a start in a proof of concept for something. I don't know if somebody else has uh, done this in this particular way. This is a Kerbal Constructs entity, basically. Uh, so I can make another one just to demonstrate this. Uh, I configure the model to be a Kerbal Constructs static. And so I just spawn another static here. Oh, no, that's the one I wanted. No, that's the one I already have. Um, convert. Okay, uh, spawn new is what I wanted to do. And Kerbal Constructs comes with a whole bunch of stuff that you can spawn already, like the admin building and stuff like that, if you wanted to create something. Uh, Control K is how you get this menu, as far as I know, though some people seem to have problems with that. Now, if I wanted to find, I've shown before um, Edwards Air Force Base. I've also got Orlando City Center. Where's that? Ah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> if I wanted a place, uh, not very good city because I don't have any textures on it. Textures take up a lot of RAM. So, but I could place a city right here just for the heck of it, but I don't want to actually. So um, let's delete that. Uh, so we can see another one of these piers here and I would have to rotate it and place it exactly. Uh, and then enable colliders if we want to make sure it can rest on it. But I'm not gonna place a new one now, but that's how I placed it. And we know from the Star Destroyer, among other things, that we can create something kilometers long without any pro well, 1.6 kilometers long without any problems. And I've also got other examples like Edwards Air Force Base, which is actually 8 by 8 kilometers, and its collider seems to work just fine too. But we need to be able to launch this off of this, so let's test that out. I'm gonna throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. It's sort of, we have to wait for the thrust here. There we go. All right, and launch. So I do want to have further developments like actual clamps on it from up here instead of using the regular launch clamps potentially. That's a whole other complicated business. And also, I uh, extend this out a little bit more. I would like to have the fuel tanks around, really big fuel tanks. I would like to have a barge and a crane. So, because that's how these parts will get to this launch platform, is we'll have some sort of barge uh, with the parts and then a crane will place them. In theory, what we would also want to do with an Aerospike SSTO is to have it land right in there, SpaceX style. You know, SpaceX wants to do that sort of thing. And of course, this would be applicable to Super Heavy. Uh, this isn't shaped exactly like a Super Heavy one, and I think they're going to use an oil rig maybe? I don't know what they're going to do with that. So yeah, but obviously this has other applications aside from the Monument Launcher. but. 
if there's anything that needs this situation, it's the monument launcher. I have no idea what's happening with the plumes. It looks like half of the plumes are way down here. That was not my intention. <laughs> hmm. Otherwise, the plumes are really tiny. I don't know if I need to... I guess I might as well bring it into orbit now. I mean, we're here. But anyway, that's the idea. I want to continue developing this stuff. But it takes time, you know. And the textures sure don't seem right right now. So I've done something wrong there. I don't know what. But yeah, the trick is it needs a collider just above the surface of the water. Either that or a collider that this can sit in. But I haven't gotten it to sit in the collider I made on the platform itself successfully. It keeps exploding, so that isn't working out. But maybe if I put another sort of launch clamp part, it'll help. But this is yet another one of those little experiments that I'm doing. I, I, I don't know, I got mixed reception from the astronaut tug, but I think this is a much more solid thing that people won't have as much trouble with. I totally get the, the apprehension about having people-shaped things in Kerbal Space Program. I don't want people either. In fact, that mission with the astronaut tug still had Kerbals on board. I don't want to replace Kerbals at all. I suppose I should ask, how far out do you think this rocket needs to be out to sea to be considered quote-unquote safe? <laughs> that I don't know. I don't actually know how far out we need to be to stick that causeway out. Practically speaking, there's no limit that I know of as far as how far I can make it. I could keep extending that. You can see it stick out right there. It's not small. It's uh, a little bit over half a kilometer long. Okay, booster set. Ugh, really close. <laughs> it's weird how the the sort of shininess on the boosters go away. But here we go, the long-awaited return of the Ray's asterisk. Slowly blossoming here. And so, another look at the aerospike as it is. It's, I mean, most people think of an air spike without the nozzles uh, like this, uh, exposed like this, but you can have it like this. This is an option, uh, especially to help with cooling a rather hot one, uh, and this would be a very hot air spike. So we have the five engines in here as well. That's because the original air spike just had the 36, but I decided it wasn't quite enough for me. I needed more power. <laughs> uh, incidentally, the struts here, they're, they're just inner tank, um, so it's not like hot staging or anything. So that that's the hydrogen tank down there, that's the oxygen tank, this is the hydrogen tank here and oxygen tank here. Up here we have a nuclear stage just for maximal, you know, nervousness and some really large nuclear engines, the Timberwind nuclear engines here. Probably separatrons would be good at this point, but we don't have them. Separation and ignition. This would qualify as a sort of hottish staging in terms of what happens to the inner stage. Okay, and so there we have 13 M1 engines, this time with their full nozzle. Instead of uh, what we have down below, which is cut off right about here. This is the full vacuum nozzle on them. We're not going to ditch the fairings until we reach orbit because I'm too nervous about the fairings decoupling safely and not hitting the body of this. Interesting to note, only four of the engines gimbal on this stage. You can take, you can see them in action there. 
that's worth pointing out because the whole thing is just one part, the engines included. That was to diminish the lag that would occur if we actually had 13 separate parts. So, and shut down. So, we have a little bit left, and if we separate off the payload, uh, we see a good 3,000 tons, which is just like a fully fueled Saturn V per spec. But anyway, that is my very first launch to orbit from an ocean-borne or sea-borne platform. Uh, probably other people have done that with various methods in the Kerbal Space Program, including in stock. I can envision how that might be done, but this method with Kerbal Constructs uh, certainly has its own unique applications, <laughs> we'll say. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see. I, I'll develop it further and we'll see how it works. Uh, so, yep, but look at those five huge nuclear engines. And I suppose we'll just get a peek at what the mission actually looks like in there. Uh, you can see how they separate here. That's so dangerous. It's red. And uh, radiators around the uh, nuclear core there, and that's uh, pebble bed reactor there, are really glowing red. Maybe extending these panels will help. Anyway, so there we go. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.